Joining us now, it's a great honor to have John Schuster of USA Curling with us. And uh, how's it going? How's it going since you got back? You know, pretty good. Not uh, not quite as busy as the last time, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's uh, it's been great to be back in Minnesota, back at home, following my kids around to various sports and that kind of stuff. And and yeah, really just getting out and and seeing people and and it's been really nice that people seem to be receiving it well, even though we didn't come home with a medal. Walk us through this time versus going four years ago. Did it feel different this time going back as gold medalists? You know, I don't know that it felt different going back as gold medalists, but it felt different going back with a different mindset. You know, halfway through that last Olympics, for me, you know, it was kind of a freeing thing where I just kind of got it and I don't think I ever went back. So I think we went there as a team and we wanted to play well, play hard, have fun. And, uh, and if we did all those things, I think we were going to be able to re you know, kind of accept any result we got. And, um, yeah, and it was, we just really enjoyed being over there and representing the U S and, and Minnesota and Wisconsin. And, uh, and yeah, and, and it didn't quite get there for us. All right. Now you're talking about the moment now as it's, kind of in your curling career when you were losing four years ago team was not doing performing as well as you had hoped and there was a point where you just said to yourself what uh for me it was really just you know it doesn't matter like people back home or around the world like yeah they're gonna see what you're doing and i think i always felt that pressure and that weight and i just kind of had to get to the point where i was playing for my teammates and myself and the people that support us like our families as opposed to having that weight of an entire country on your back and and when i kind of got away from honestly feeling that burden that's when all of a sudden you know the magic started happening and and it's really honestly left a freeing feeling for me ever since like being on the ice and and i don't have you know i was i was with one of my teammates from 10 and 14 last week and and for me like i don't I don't feel the burnout that I maybe expected, but I think it has a lot to do with that new mindset. You were the flag bearer for the United States walking in in the opening ceremonies. How did that assignment come about? And what did you think when they said they wanted you to be the guy? <laughs> uh, I've, that process in the US is so cool because uh, each um, sport gets to nominate somebody to carry the flag. And, and I was one of USA Curling's nominations because now we have a male and a female flag bearer. And, um, and yeah, and we got to kind of make a video just saying, you know, what being a flag bearer would mean to us. And, and for me, I just kind of, you know, I wanted to even provide some wisdom to the people that maybe would watch the video from every sport about things I learned at the Olympics and, and things I thought were important you know, as being a member of Team USA. And, and apparently, you know, that message kind of resonated with some people and, and yeah, getting voted to, to carry the flag for our country was, was the biggest, you know, honor, you know, I've ever had. And I think an athlete can have is carrying that flag because they really only nominate two people to do that. And, um, and it, was, it was a blast besides and being able to share that with Brittany Bow and, and to have that experience. I got to talk to Alana Myers who was, who got elected, who couldn't do it because she tested positive for COVID. Right. Um, but by getting to share that experience with, with those tremendous athletes was, was also really cool. You have an event coming up where people can hang with you, chat with you, have fun, and learn more about the sport and more about your adventures. Uh, when is that? Uh, so on March 23rd, uh, I'm going to be down here in the Twin Cities. And, uh, and yeah, it's just a, a small event that, you know, bring families out too. And, and I'm just going to be on stage, um, you know, with having a conversation and, uh, and really just talking about my experiences, you know, in the Olympics and, and some of the ways that we got there and, and, you know, I'm probably going to bring the medals along and probably, <laughs> probably my opening and closing ceremonies jackets for people to try out. And, uh, and yeah, so, so on March 23rd, uh, we're just going to have a good time down there in Minneapolis and, uh, and yeah, it, it should be a lot of fun to see a lot of faces because, you know, the lockdowns that we had since 2020, there's so many curlers and people in the cities that, you know, I've connected with and, and had relationships with that now I'll be able to get a chance to actually come out and, and see me and, and reconnect. All right. So we'll put the information on the screen for everybody to check it out, but it's March 23rd and they can get there and have a good time. And it's, it's really cool how this sport 
has grown and has taken off, not just from your win, but the four years since then. It really hasn't died off per se. No, and, and I think we see that through the membership of the curling club is I, you can find that in the Twin Cities here for sure because, yeah. you know, it used to be a one curling club kind of uh, town, for instance, but, I mean, now there's, there's five full-time curling clubs here and all of them, you know, have tremendous memberships and, uh, and all are, are accepting, you know, new people coming in to try it, but, but it, it really is, you know, down here really booming and, and it's a lot of fun to be a part of that. All right. Well, John Schuster, thank you so much. Thank you for wearing the red, white, and blue and uh, representing our country once again. Thank you so much. It's an uh, honor of my lifetime.